My new landlord is a very weird guy. I just moved into a new house over the weekend and just paid the first month's rent. I sign a year lease. The house itself is okay for being built in the 30s. Lots of work to be done. Weird layout, unfinished porch. Okay, it is a shitty house, but I had to take what I could get. When I saw the house posted on Craigslist, I immediately called the number listed and asked if I could view it that day or another day during the week. Right off the bat, the dude gives me a bad vibe. Not really creepy yet, but definitely annoying. We arranged to meet that Saturday so he could show me the inside of the house. He texted me every day, multiple times, to make sure you're absolutely certain you want to view the house because I don't want to waste my time. I assured him several times that I literally live five minutes away and I'll be there on Saturday, no question. I should mention, I found the house for me and my elderly father, who was in a wheelchair to move into. The landlord was out in the yard waiting with a huge smile on his face. I waved hello and then went around to my passenger side door to help my father out of the car and into his chair. The landlord's face immediately changed to a scowl. As we approached him, my dad holds his hand out for a handshake when he just looks at me and says, I thought it was just you, while completely ignoring my dad. I awkwardly try to explain, I didn't think to mention it since he didn't ask, so he goes ahead and actually shows us the house. It's livable, so we give him the deposit, all is well. We moved over the weekend and paid the rent on the 6th. The landlord told me he would need access to the house today to do some plumbing work. I said, no worries, but I'll be at work, so I'll leave the key above the door. I typically get off at around 12.30 and told him as such. At around 10, he texted me again, wanting me to confirm that I was absolutely not going to be there before 12.30 because of a safety hazard. I said yes, I will be there after 12.30. Well, I actually ended up getting off pretty early. I was headed home at 11, and I figured I'd just pop my head in and tell the landlord I was here, but I would stay outside. However, now, remember when I said the layout of the house was weird? It's because the front door leads directly into a bedroom. This is my bedroom. There's another door to the left, and that's the living room, which leads into the kitchen and back door bathroom. So, I turn the doorknob, and it's unlocked. When I walked in, all I see is my landlord just hightailing out of my room, through the living room, kitchen, back door, and out the back door. I then see his car race out of my driveway, weirded out. I walk back into my bedroom, only to find my underwear drawer open and strewn about. My nightstand was open too. I don't know what to do at this point because I'm kind of stuck here. It's hard to find housing with my credit, and even harder finding a place that is wheelchair accessible. So, creepy landlord, as much as I like to say let's not meet again, I know I'm gonna have to fucking deal with you for 12 more months, please. Leave my underwear alone, you fucking creep. Edit. Final updates. It, it's been an eventful couple of days. I, I can't disclose a lot of information because my lawyer has advised me not to. But I can tell you guys that according to my lawyer, I absolutely will get all of my money back. I moved all of our belongings into storage and we are currently staying with family. Long story short, I took your guys' advice and bought a night vision motion sensor camera. This worked incredibly in my favor because I caught my landlord on camera coming to my house at 2am and trying to look into my window. We were at the motel. With this evidence, my lawyer has pretty much assured me that things will go in my favor. I'm working on getting my father approved for disability, and several kind redditors in my area have offered me temporary and even permanent housing. I cannot express to you guys how thankful I am for all of your help. Even the people commenting negative things helped to light a fire under my ass to be proactive. So I guess this issue is resolved or getting close to it. So this will be the last updates. I appreciate all of you and have a wonderful night. Met Satan in a bar. This was back in the 1990s. I was a single mother and picked up a Saturday night bartending job at a place that was off the highway on a frontage road. Not immediately close to anything, but in between some pretty large towns in the affluent suburbs north of Chicago, Barrington area, not in Barrington, however. This place was hopping after work hours, but sadly not on Saturday nights and I'd often find myself alone, 
or with only a handful of customers. This particular night was dark, rainy, and a thunderstorm was raging outside. In walks this rugged, handsome man, windswept blonde hair, crystal blue eyes, nice build, and he sits at the bar. It's just the two of us, and I walk over to take his drink order. He orders, I make the drink, and he had put 225 on the bar. I, I hand him the drink and realize that he didn't give me enough money. So I tell him that I need another quarter. The drink is 250. Mind you, we are alone in this good sized bar. It's a dark night and thunder and lightning are raging outside. It's not close to any other businesses that I can run to or where other people might be. And he looks at me straight in the eye and calmly says, I'm Satan. Tell me what you really want. I can give you anything you want. What is it you really want? At this point, I'm shaking in my shoes, not sure how I even mustered up a response. And I looked back at him and said, I want another quarter for a drink, and I want you to stop being so scary. He gave me the quarter, downed his drink, and left. I had to close up alone, and believe me, I, I was on edge until the following morning. Didn't work there much longer after that, seeing Satan once was enough. Let's not meet again. Hashtag, I want to add, he had the most unusual and beautiful gold pendant on it. It was an ornate octopus. And now that I read a lot about conspiracies and high strangeness, the octopus symbolizes the Illuminati. The bar was close to, but not in a very affluent Chicago suburb. I can't help but wonder who he actually was, or worse, what he was actually up to. Weird Irish Experience I hope I am submitting this to the correct forum, but if no, I will move it. Last year, two of my best friends and I went to Europe in order to visit my friend Carrie's daughter, whose husband was in the Navy and has been stationed there. Anyways, on the last leg of our trip, we had decided to visit Dublin, Ireland for a few days. Everything went great while we were there, and on the last night, we decided that we would go and have a couple drinks at the pub, though just a couple blocks down from our flat. Well, my friend Carrie is a pretty friendly lady, and after a drink or two, we were all feeling a little more comfortable in our surroundings, and she started chatting it up with this Irish man, who we will call Dave. Right away, Carrie's daughter and I felt there was something a little off about this man. After about an hour of talking, Carrie had wanted to take her picture with him, and he seemed to get pretty upset about this and told her that he doesn't take pictures, and he doesn't have a Facebook, and doesn't want his picture on any kind of social media, etc. Okay, I get that. But there's lots of people who don't have Facebooks or Twitters or whatever for their own personal reasons, and I respect that. But this man just acted downright paranoid about everything. At this point, I thought maybe he had a wife or girlfriend, and he's afraid that somehow they'll see this picture of him in some place that he isn't supposed to be on some American woman's social media account, an impending doom will ensue for him. I tend to be very paranoid though, and I told her daughter we need to take a selfie. But instead of taking a selfie, I snapped a picture of the man. I'm not saying it was right, but I've been through some pretty crappy stuff in my lifetime, and I've learned that one thing you do not do is ignore when your intuition tells you, and mine was telling me something was off and if anything happened, I wanted a picture of this man. Dave would look around a lot and try to get my friend to go outside and smoke with him, even though she told him several, several times she didn't smoke anymore, and he encouraged her to drink more. Eventually, Carrie's daughter was ready to go back to the flat, so knowing how my friend has the tendency to wander when drinking, I'm way worse. Carrie at least has triggers you can use to help her remember to stay in one shot. I asked her if she would watch my purse for me and not go anywhere while I walked her daughter back to the apartment real quick. By the time I arrived back at the pub, Dave had gone Carrie outside to smoke, and he didn't look excited to see me back. Now, I will admit that sometimes, I probably like to over-dramatize people's facial features in my mind, because it makes the conversations in my head more exciting, but I'm pretty sure I saw some genuine disappointment there. Since the pub was closing, Dave asked us if we wanted to go somewhere else and drink with him, when I pointed out everything was closed, he said that there were places that were always open we could go to. Carrie was eager to go, and I followed, even though my gut feeling was telling me this probably wasn't going to end well. 
but I was also not ready to return to the apartment and go to bed. So, lo and behold, Dave walks us to a door that has a flashing neon sign above it, and in which it says, Open 24 hours, but there's no name above the door, just, just a sign. We walk down a flight of stairs and Dave pays 15 euros for each of us to enter. When we get to the bottom of the stairs, and to what my wondrous eyes doth appear, but a blackjack table on my right, and roulette-like table on my left, and in front is a row of five bar stools with five scantily clad working women sitting upon them. At this point, Carrie and I both look at each other, and Dave starts claiming that he didn't know that this is what the place was, but that we had probably better act like we belonged here so we don't stir up any trouble. I automatically get a grim feeling, because he had no problem shelling out the money for us to come down here, and for someone who didn't know what this place was, the bartender was quick to bring him a Heineken and then ask if his friends wanted anything, in which he ordered each of us a drink as well. After they gave us our drinks, Dave told us we should go downstairs so that we could talk without looking suspicious. Of course, Carrie and I had already been questioning the prostitutes about how much they liked their jobs and everything, so I'm pretty sure there isn't much else we could have done to point out where we were newcomers. Whenever we went downstairs, he sat us at a table and a man came down after him and kept trying to talk to him, and he told the man that he was talking to his family because he raised his voice like he was trying to signal something to the guy and he just wasn't getting it at all. And he didn't even know him, and the guy sauntered away exclaiming, fine, if that's how you want to be about it, we can talk later. I should also mention that Dave had told us that he was born and raised in Dublin, so I found it hard to believe that he had no idea where he was taking us when he brought us there. So at this point, in my overactive imagination, I'm 97% sure that we're going to be sold into sex slavery and this is the end for us. But I sit there and listen to him ask my friend a whole bunch of weird questions, which included, is there anyone waiting for you back home? Which she takes to mean, do you have a boyfriend? And she launches into that whole story. Meanwhile, I'm getting, I'm getting up once to pee every once in a while, dumping my drink down the sink because I don't trust this man or this place. Eventually, as the conversation gets weirder, I pull up my phone and start texting one of my friends who are back home. All of a sudden, Dave starts paying more attention to me, asking me what I'm doing and telling me that I should put my phone away before I get in trouble and that I shouldn't be on it anyways when I'm supposed to be on vacation. When I didn't put my phone away like he told me to, he asked who was so important that I was talking to right now at this moment anyways. Everyone at home should be working by now, etc. And I told them, oh, I'm just texting my boyfriend, to which Carrie starts to say I don't have a boyfriend, and I play it off like she just forgot that Andrew and I got back together right before we left. He commented, what do you need to text your boyfriend for right now? And he sounded like he was kind of angry about that whole situation. Now, I may have just underestimated our situation. It could really be that he really was afraid we would get beat up or something for having me having my phone up, but there were no signs that no phones and no one had said anything to me about no phones about it while we were upstairs anyways. So I felt like he was acting this way for a whole different reason. He also said, Now you're not taking any pictures of me now, are you? So whenever I told him that the reason I was texting my boyfriend was because I had given him my iCloud information before he left, and a list of the places we were staying and what nights because I knew it wasn't safe for decent looking American women to be traveling alone with no idea of what they were getting themselves into. And he had messaged me because he noticed that my GPS didn't show me back at our apartment yet and wanted to just make sure that we were okay. I didn't feel bad. After telling him that, he was fairly quick to get us out of there saying, we have been there long enough. It wouldn't look funny if we went ahead and left now, etc. He then asked if he could walk us back to our apartment to which I tried to say we were fine, but Carrie told him that it would just be peachy so that he walked us back to our flat. Now, thankfully we had rented a place that had a gate that you had to unlock before entering the area where the doors to the rooms are and ours was on the second floor. Whenever we reached the outside of the building, Dave is trying to talk to Carrie into letting him take us on a drive around Ireland and then taking us back to the apartment later. But earlier he said he walks everywhere or takes a taxi and by this time, it, it was almost 3 a.m. in the morning, so it's not like we would have seen anything in the darkness. So I tell him, no, we aren't going to go on a ride with him right now, but maybe in the morning, we could meet up and he could take us. Not really meaning it, just wanting him to leave us alone and go away. And he says that that would be a great idea, but then he wants to come up to the apartment until we are ready to go. 
Carrie thinks this sounds okay, but then asks me if it sounds okay because she, she isn't really sure since she's been drinking a lot, and I tell him and her that it's probably not a, a, appropriate since we aren't the only ones staying there. Dave says that he will be real quiet and asks how many other people are there and are they girls too. The whole time he ain't saying this, I am trying to shove Carrie through the gate away from Dave and he's trying to get into the gate. So I tell him that we'll meet him at 8am at the bridge for him to take us on our ride and he says that's too late, we should be gone by 7am and I say okay, we'll meet you by 7am then. He is reluctant to leave the gate and tries one more time to make it through but I had wedged my foot into a crevice between where the cement from the outside of the gate came through and met with a stone that made up the floor of the lobby area, and so he couldn't shove me out of the way. Finally, he slips away, and I push Carrie up the stairs and told her to go open the apartment door, and here is how you know that I lived through some stuff, because I'm going right back down to that gate to make sure he didn't slip a rock or something between the gate to prevent it from closing, so that he could try to sneak up to our room somehow later. Eventually, when I get into the apartment, I am locking all the doors and check my windows to see him just staring up at where our apartment is. I don't know what he is thinking, but something was off, and I didn't even know what floor we were on, unless Carrie told him whenever I took her daughter back to the flat. We did not meet him in the morning, and I hope we never meet again. I still have a picture that we snapped of him, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to post it, so I refrained for now. The Bread Woman So this incident happened to me a couple years back when I was walking home from school with a few of my friends, and I still remember it vividly. School had just finished, and the row we normally walked down was fairly quiet, with only a few people walking down it. The weather was typical English weather, with grey skies and all. So, me and my two friends were casually walking down this road, talking about football and other stuff as well, while walking, in the distance, about 40 meters, my eyes caught a glimpse of what, from where I was, looked like two silhouettes of people being stopped by another person. I am not sure why, but I had a feeling in my stomach that we were going to get stopped by the person, purely due to the fact that the person was just waiting by their front garden fence, slowly pacing up and down, up and down. As we got closer and closer, my eyes saw what the person looked like, and to be honest, it startled me. It was an old woman. I'd say about 60 to 70 years old. She had yellow crooked teeth with hair that looked like it hadn't been washed in the last six months. She was wearing some robe, which looked like it had not been washed in ages as well. As we neared her, I joked to my friends that the woman was going to question us, and they just smiled and pushed me forward as the woman neared us, bent her neck down slightly, and said in a croaky voice, Excuse me, can you help me? Being the good Samaritan I am, I asked her, what do you need help with? She replied with, Can you go to the store and buy some bread for me, please? Her voice was not normal, but I sort of thought that she was an aging woman with memory problems or something like that, or just, I don't know, genuinely needed help given her physical appearance, her physical abilities, and her voice. So I tried my best to explain that I was sorry and had to get home quickly, and that she should ask her neighbor or something, let alone passing strangers to buy some bread, you know? My friends were trying their best not to laugh, as they realized that I was going to be here a long-ass time, as this woman was very, very persistent on getting some bread. Soon after, her responses just got plain out weird, and our grins turned to the shock and horror. She starts saying even more stuff, stuff like, Please... Can you come down to my basement and fix the refrigerator? I don't have any money to pay the bills. There is no bread left in the fridge, please. I just need $30 to pay my bills. Given that I've seen a lot of weird things in, in my life, this is right up there as one of those most bizarre things that's ever, ha ever occurred to me. The way she said all these verses were so out of the ordinary and alarm bells were ringing inside of my head, 
No way on earth was I going down to her fucking basement. You can tell she was annoyed that none of us went into her house, as the responses started getting more and more aggressive. At this moment, I realized it was better to get out of here, as this woman was only persistent on two things. One, me trying to go into her house and fix her fridge, and two, she wanted some bread for some unknown reason. She literally wanted and actually thought that I, I would go into her house and supposedly fix her fridge in the basement? While well, my stranger danger instinct kicked, and this woman to me and my friend seemed like a potential danger. As I tried to leave, she kept on moving closer and closer to me, and did not want to let us go. All she kept saying was she kept repeating the same things over and over again, please, I need some bread. On the inside, I was literally terrified. Me and my friends saved me by saying some excuse which I cannot remember, but someone made her zone out for a minute which gave us time to get away from that whole situation. As we left, we all looked behind and saw her evil face just stare us down as she muttered some incoherent words under her breath. Her eyes looked as if they were filled with both rage and desperation. She literally just stood there on her fence staring us down the whole time. We walked down that road. I literally could feel gaze burning the back of my head to this day. I, I, I don't know whether the woman had problems or if she just really had ill intentions. I've only seen her once since that incident, and that was only while walking past and seeing her look crazily out her window, her face just pressed against it with that same angered face. So, bread woman down the road, let's not meet again.